Want to beat the crowds in Disney World? Want to ride all the rides? Want to squeeze the most experience you can out of your vacation? We've got the pro tips to get you there, but also make sure you stay alive. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Every day in Disney World equates to spending at least hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars for an average family. And we wanna get the most out of each minute. So for those of you who are committed to experiencing everything you can when you're in Disney World, we've got all the pro tips for how to make the most of each day on your Disney World vacation. Number one is gonna be show up early. If you wanna be one of the first ones in the park waiting at the rope to get into Toy Story Land, yeah, there's often literally a rope that gets dropped. You're gonna to wanna to be at the parks and through the tap styles at least 30 minutes before the park officially opens. And even that is cutting it close some days. Parks open in two phases. They'll first let guests into the park, but hold you at a certain point, usually at the end of Main Street or Hollywood Boulevard. Basically, they'll just keep you from entering the lands and forming lines for rides before they open. Open. Then comes the official rope drop when you can enter the lands and rush towards the attraction you want to ride first. In Hollywood Studios, the park opening time is sharp. Magic Kingdom is usually the same as they have an opening show on the castle stage. But sometimes parks may open a bit earlier than advertised, which is why you want to make sure you're there on time. Tap styles will usually open about an hour ahead of the park so you can get in and get towards the front of the pack. This means you've got to be up and out of your hotel well before park opening, so you'll want to plan ahead and maybe set aside your clothes the night before because it might still be dark when you head out. Number two, don't forget about extra magic hours. Extra magic hours are an awesome perk for Disney hotel guests that give you extra time in the parks before they officially open to the public, either for an extra hour in the morning or usually two extra hours at the end of the night. You definitely wanna keep tabs on park hours. Make sure you know exactly when the park is opening for you. If you're off site, you won't be able to use extra magic hours unless you're at one of the good neighbor hotels that offers that perk. So don't plan on rope dropping on a day with extra magic hours as the park will already be open no matter when you enter. Extra magic hour days often draw bigger crowds to those parks, so while rope dropping during extra magic hours will mean lower waits early in the day, things can get pretty crowded later on, so consider hopping to another park or taking a break as crowds start to build. And keep an eye out for early morning magic events. These are hard ticketed events like after hours, but obviously in the morning, and that means people will be in line before you're allowed in the park. Number three, plan your fast passes and ride strategy appropriately. First of all, know which rides offer fast pass at your designated park. Then make sure you're booking your fast passes on time. 60 days in advance if you're staying at a Disney World Resort hotel, 30 days if you're staying off site. But here's where the real strategy comes in. If there are several popular attractions you wanna ride, consider which ones require a pre-booked fast pass, which ones you may be able to use single rider for, which ones have a separate waiting process like the boarding groups at Rise of the Resistance, and which ones you may be able to ride first thing in the morning without too much of a wait. For example, let's say we're going to do Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now that there are plenty of desirable attractions here from Slinky Dog Dash to Rise of the Resistance, Tower of Terror, Toy Story Mania, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Millennium Falcon, and more, once you throw in being able to pre-book only three pass passes and only one of them can be top tier, it's a struggle to figure out the strategy. How are we gonna ride all of these without standing in line for hours upon hours? Well, let's break it down. Rise of the Resistance has a boarding pass procedure in place, so as long as you arrive before park opening, are through the tap styles before the park officially opens, and have your My Disney Experience app queued up to get a boarding pass, you should be good to go on that one. Next, top tier fast passes. Right now, these are Slinky Dog Dash, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and Millennium Falcon in Hollywood Studios. Of the three, Slinky Dog usually has the most consistently long line, so I'd recommend fast passing Slinky Dog if your whole family wants to ride that one. Then doing single rider line for Millennium Falcon and riding Mickey and Minnie's as soon as the park opens and you've secured your Rise of the Resistance boarding pass. Second tier fast passes? Prioritize Toy Story Midway Mania and Tower of Terror there if those are important to you. And here's the best trick. If you are rope dropping, make your fast passes for late morning. That will give you time to ride several other popular attractions before the lines get too long. That happens at around 10 a.m. when all the late sleepers start heading into the parks. 
you should be able to get on at least two e-ticket rides with low weights, not using FastPass before 10 a.m. Finally, don't forget to get more fast passes after you use up your first three. Rock and roller coaster alien swirling saucers usually pretty gettable in the afternoon as your fourth and fifth fast passes on most days of the year. Now, if you're going on Christmas Day, all bets are off. Fourth big tip, don't use Disney transportation in the morning. If you really want to make sure you're in the park half an hour to an hour before it opens, using Disney transportation is not your best bet. Most transportation options will start running about 45 minutes to an hour ahead of the earliest park opening, buses, boats, monorails, etc. But the Skyliner usually only starts running about half an hour ahead of Hollywood Studios opening. Basically, none of these are going to get you there to be one of the first in line, and the Skyliner is really cutting it close if you need to transfer from Art of Animation or Pop Century, or if it stops at all on your trip. We'd recommend driving if you brought your own car or are using a rental or taking a minivan, a lift, or a taxi. That way you can leave as soon as you're ready and get to the park nice and early without having to worry about a bus that doesn't come or a Skyliner that doesn't open on time. Next, you need to know where to go. Make sure you've looked at a map before you get to the park. You need to know exactly what direction you're headed so you get in the right line or crowd. Hollywood Studios has a big giant sign that will direct you to Toy Story Land or Galaxy's Edge, but if it's your first time, you'll want to check that map to know where to go in the rest of the parks. Cast members will be around to help direct you and answer any questions you might have, so don't be afraid to ask if you're not sure where you're going, but we're always going to recommend that you look at and memorize that park map early, early, early before you go to the park. All right, next one, have a plan. Now we've already talked about scheduling and fast passes, so you've already got a plan. But once you've exhausted the early morning hours and used up your first three fast passes, it's time to think about conserving your energy as well. Make a plan ahead of time so that when you're done riding your top tier must do's, you're doing attractions in the same general area at the same time rather than running back and forth across the park. No point in tiring yourself out unless you're planning on heading back to take a nap. Plan to ride rides that are next to each other and work your way around the park after you've hit your first big rides of the day. And then plan for some sort of rest period. You've ridden your must-dos, so work in where to take a breather, whether that's a table service meal in the park or an escape back to the hotel for a swim or a nap. It'll refresh everyone so they're ready for the fireworks that night. Even scheduling a slow-moving, long, dark, air-conditioned ride in the afternoon can be the rest you need to get back out there if you're really in it to win it and won't stop for food or swimming. Now, here's what you need to know to actually stay alive and comfortable while you're trying to do this through your Disney vacation. If you're getting to the parks early, bring your own breakfast or book a super early one. This is particularly true if you're headed to Hollywood Studios, which pretty much everyone will be for the foreseeable future, unless you don't care about riding Rise of the Resistance. Lines for Starbucks get crazy long first thing in the morning in every park, though. And you don't want to sacrifice your spot at the front of the pack for a coffee, so plan on bringing your own. If you show up early enough, you shouldn't have too much trouble grabbing a snack, but if you're arriving half an hour before opening, this tip's going to save you some serious waiting time. And who wants their first line of the day to be for coffee anyway? Alternatively, you can book an early breakfast at Be Our Guest or Cinderella's Royal Table and get into the park before it's even open for rope droppers, and you'll get a full breakfast before hitting rides. Just make sure you finish in time to hop in line as soon as that park opens. This is true at Epcot and Animal Kingdom as well. You can grab an 8 a.m. Acrosuce reservation to hop in line for Frozen Ever After or at Tusker House to get a jump on lines for Flight of Passage. Just keep in mind these parks will often open ahead of schedule, so it might not be the most leisurely breakfast you've ever had. Also, wear those layers. As we said, arriving early in the morning might mean you're headed to the parks while it's still dark, and that means it's going to be a lot chillier than it will be later in the afternoon, so wear those layers. Before the park opens, you'll be standing around a lot, and it's easy to get chilly if you're not moving. It does get cold in Florida, I promise. So bring some sleeves that you can toss in a bag once the sun comes out. And don't forget that sunscreen and sunglasses. You won't need them first thing in the morning, but you definitely will by noon. Next, don't plan to rope drop every day. Speaking of getting tired, it's probably not the best idea to rope drop every single day of your trip. Getting up when it's still dark is not fun, and we bet not everyone in your travel party is going to be gung-ho about a pre-dawn wake-up every day of vacation. 
Remember, this is vacation. You should probably relax a little bit. Plus, you want to make it to see the fireworks at least one night of your trip, right? You can plan a resort day or otherwise a day where you head to the parks a little later. Just plan some fast passes for the afternoon, maybe a nice long sit-down breakfast, or plan to hit evening extra magic hours or even an after-hours event. But the key here, planning. Make sure you have your must-dos accounted for in your vacation strategy and then give yourself time to relax or else you'll definitely need a vacation after your vacation. Now our last tip and I think our most important tip, don't stress and keep your priorities straight. So you just spent two years planning the perfect Disney vacation. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but things are going to go wrong, you guys. We've got a whole video about what to do when things go wrong in Disney World, and I can guarantee you they've happened to all of us. You won't be the first person on Millennium Falcon. Your kiddo may get sick and need extra rest, and your family might decide it's way more fun to just sleep in and then play in the hotel pool than to get up early to ride the most incredible ride Disney Imagineering has ever accomplished. It'll happen. Remember, your family, your health, your well well-being comes first. Yes, you want to make amazing memories. I know you do, and your pocketbook knows you do. But amazing memories can be made in the hotel pool and at a random counter service lunch and just watching Mickey cartoons in the hotel room. When you're breaking down because you're late for one dining reservation you got up at 4 a.m. to make and you've already prepaid $500 and you ain't getting that money back and the baby's crying and your spouse is a grouch and the teenager won't take out their earbuds or your best friend you're traveling with is just whining endlessly about Brad who dumped her even though Brad was not a good catch in the first place and she should be grateful. We've all been there. Don't stress. Hug them. Love on them. Remember that no vacation is more important than the people you're with and making memories doesn't have to cost money or include giant mice. All you need to make memories is you loving people. The end. So I will get off my soapbox now, my friends. Hopefully that helps you to plan your trip to make sure you get everything done that you want to get done. There's a lot of good information there, but like I said, that last little bit is probably the biggest deal. Um, as always, I thank you for listening. I thank you guys for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.